Sure. Coach, he's back. Mike Zimmer, kind enough to join us. From one media jackal meat grinder to the other, <laughs> I saw you across the way. Uh, how did you do with the with the jackals? Were they after you, or was it pretty were pretty calm and quiet? Did you take the starch out of them? Well, they you know they they like the um, first. Thank you for letting me come today. Good to have you. Uh, always a pleasure. <laughs> you know they're always trying to get information. Yeah. And uh, and get stuff going. I haven't seen the. I haven't seen the kicker yet, so it's hard for me to. <laughs> we saw him. We saw him. He's got a nice leg. He's, really? he's nice got a leg. boomer going. When, yeah. when is he ready to go? He is. <laughs> <laughs> here, Tyler. So this gentleman here, this is this guy's been Ty hanging with you all day. Tyler Manning. He's my ball boy today. Nice, yeah. outstanding. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, it's been quite, it's quite. A, I bet you an education for the kid. Now, how have you done? Have you kind of cleaned up the language, or how's it been for I, that? I slipped <laughs> once, didn't I? In, in a, in a, when he was, was breaking it? down the team, I slipped once. But what's uh, uh, what's uh, your, your first name again? Is Tyler? Yep. Yes. Tyler, what Here, Tyler. Uh, how, has this been fun for you? What's this experience been been like tracking uh, the head coach? Um, it was amazing. This was like it's a really cool center. Yeah. Um, it was like like breathtaking just being seeing like the inside and like all of the players and their normal without their gear on. And sure. It's cool. Sure. Yeah, it's got to be fun. To, uh, to, to follow the head coach around. And it turns out on a busy news day, to who knew <laughs> when you got this uh, this honor, this opportunity, that it was going to be the day after we're making, we're changing snappers and we got a new kicker and maybe a new punter. Who knew you? This is what you're going to be walking into. Yeah, it was fun doing all of this ball boy stuff. I loved it. It's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, we appreciate you stopping by. So how did Dennis Ryan t treat you? I'm um, good. We uh, <laughs> carried good some of the... He gave the you some shoes and shirts. Oh, yeah, nice. the whole bit, huh? Yeah. Now, you didn't do any hit, yeah. any hitting out there, did you? You didn't? No hitting? No. no, I wouldn't think so. That'd be a little bit rough, I would think. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, well, good to see you. You can yeah. hang. You obviously hang hang with us here as we try to talk to the head coach a little bit about the uh, the busy day. First of all, let me ask you one thing. Are you in trouble with Bill Parcells? Because the story I read today was you hung up on him, that you saw who was on the phone, and you hung up on him. You don't hang up on Bill Parcells, do you? Well, I was in the middle of press conference. <laughs> I, I, if I would have been a little quicker thinking, I would have said, hey, coach, can you do this while yeah. you're here? But he, he loved doing these things, Oh, as yeah, you know. he loved them. Yeah. He, um, <clears throat> but I called him this morning. We talked this morning. How's he doing? He's doing very well. He's trying to buy a horse in Saratoga. Really? To, uh, yeah, they have their uh, horse sales. And so we were talking about that a little bit. And then he's talking about the football team. And, you know, Sean Payton was one of his coaches, That's as true. I was. And yeah. so we talked a little bit about the game and things like that. Does he ever? Does he, have you ever? Do you ever invite him in? Does he ever make yeah, a trip in yeah, once or twice? I almost had. No, he hasn't been in. But I, I did go down and see him this this uh, spring. I went to Florida and met with him for a day. But um, I've I almost had him talked into coming this year. Really? He said, "I really want to come. I really want to come." And then he always says, "This is busy time for his horses." So uh, um, I'll, I'll get him you here. Should before, yeah. yeah. After all these years, and you know, I, I would assume he'd like to hang with you a little bit. All right, so you, I'm sure you talked about it over there, but our listeners have not heard about it. You make some, some changes yesterday. You admitted, I think, to them that you might have fibbed a little bit about what you knew because <laughs> you weren't supposed to let the cat out of the bag. Right. Tell us about sort of how the day went yesterday. Uh, well, Rick came in my office, and he says we, we might be able to get this. We, we, we had talked about him a little bit, and then he came in my office, and it was early in the morning. He said we might be able to get this done. And, uh, We're talking about Kerry Vedvik, the yes, kicker. Yes. Okay. And he said, and, and he said, uh, you know, I, I said, well, what do you mean you might have gotten it done? And he said, well, he he said yes, but I want to make sure he under we understand all the parameters of the trade and all that. And then, um, so, right before I walked down to the press conference, uh, they said it's done. Okay, he's got to come in here and do a physical. So don't say anything. Keep it all hush hush. So I walked down the press conference. The first question out of anybody is, you know, what about this trade that's going on? I'm like, ah, what did <laughs> I say? So I, d I did fib a little bit. I knew about it, but I was supposed to be quiet. Yeah. So, so I was being a good soldier. So you had to wait it out. You were, doing, you, you were doing the job under the circumstances. So the feeling I have early, I don't know if you can speak to this yet or not, is that right now that you mainly brought Vedvik in to punt and perhaps to hold and that – maybe also as insurance uh, as place kicker. Is that a fair characterization, or how would you lay out I, I your thinking at this point? Uh, honestly, so Jerry Rossberg is a good friend of mine. He's, he was a special teams coach with the uh, Ravens. So I called him. I said, tell me about this guy. Is he a punter? Is he a kicker? Is he, you know, what is he? And uh, he said, basically, he said, you know, he can do probably all of it. He's an NFL talent. That's all I can tell you. He can do any of these. 
And um, I, I said, okay. And he's, so at the end of the day, we just need to look at him and figure it out. And, you know, that, like I was telling those guys over there, um, I didn't see him today. You guys saw him more than I did because I was on the he's other He's got field. a leg for sure, yeah. <laughs> he, he, but, he was booming him. But um, I don't know what he is. And so we'll determine that as this week goes on when I get a chance to see him. Uh, you know, it, it may be a little bit difficult to have a rookie punter, a rookie kicker, a rookie kickoff guy. You know, so we, we'll have to make that decision, um, you know, how it goes. Uh, we've been having problems with the holding. You know, so I think that's a little bit of an issue there. I like Dan Bailey, um, and so. I've never heard you say like a kicker before. By the way, no, I'm con I'm no, concerned about you no, there. Usually, no. you don't like kickers. No, he's 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 a very mature, professional guy. He's not flaky at all. He's you know he's a, a, a regular guy, and so. Um, Rare for kickers. <laughs> you said that. Yeah. Uh, so. We just have to figure really. But what do you it worry out. about what impact? You know, this guy's for a while statistically. I think he was like the all-time best kicker in football. Do you worry about then if he feels like okay, they don't, they must not love me because they're bringing this guy in because they love his leg? Do you worry no. about the impact that has on him there? Not really. On Bailey. Not really. I, what what we told him is, and I didn't talk to him. You know, I don't. You know, we bring a guy in. I don't feel like I need to talk to him and say, hey, you know, your job's in jeopardy, whatever. Right. Um, but I I think. It's a competition. We we go figure out. Maybe he's the punter and you're the kicker. Maybe he's the kicker and you're the punter. I don't know. So, but in, but until we get a chance to look at him and practice and watch the tapes and those things, uh, I don't think we can make a decision. Yet. Was the whole thing? It was seen to me again. Given what you want to concentrate on, is it is it? Are you worried at all about your messing with? Even though it's still early in camp, really. Like you said, long snap issues holding issues, that this is the kind of stuff I think most people like to think, well, that's settled. That gets settled in the offseason. You don't have to even think about it. You're in a very different position from that. Does that frustrate you? No, because positions are like that all the time. You know, uh, you know, we're trying to find who, who's the, the third corner, who's the, right. you know, who's the fourth receiver. I mean, all those different positions are, we're trying to find. And so, um, you know, it's just part of the process, trying to get the best players in here and figure out where we go from there. The the decision on, on making the switch on long snapper is just literally performance, would you say? No, or? We, we, we actually talked about it last week. You know, the the operation with the center, the snapper, the holder, and the kicker had different speeds on that, different road, you know. So that part, we, were, we said we, we probably need to make a decision after this first ball game because we need to figure out – you know, and let one guy go, and so we can kind of figure out: is it the snapper? Is it the kicker? Is it the holder? What what, what is the problem here with making these field goals? And um, so I think hopefully that will settle down and figure out where we're at there. But uh, you know, Kevin Kevin was Kevin McDermott was a terrific team guy, a, a great kid. Um, it really was nothing he did wrong. You know, cutter cutting's a little bit younger, a little bit more athletic. A um, little bit faster velocity, you know, and he's got to make sure he gets it in the right spot. So, Mike Zimmer, our guest and the fan of after Vikings practice on this Monday from TCO Performance Center. You have your first preseason game in the book. You know, we were talking about on the air about the Thielen catch on the first drive, on the on the drive that ended in a touchdown. That was first rule as a touchdown, then he was down by contact. And I said to me that that wasn't necessarily a well thrown ball. Thielen made a heck of a play and. Somebody pointed out to me, it's like, yeah, but you know what? Part of maybe the next step for Cousins, too, is trusting receivers enough that even if there's not a big, you know, separation, let your receivers, if they're your, your the two of the best players on your team, let them go up and make plays. Do you agree with that? Is that what, how do you view I, that play? Yeah, I, I think it was a great catch by Adam. I, I think Kirk uh, got the look that he, was, he wanted. And at the end of the day, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Most of the time, the receivers, that's why they paid the, the money they are, is so they can go up and get the ball. But, you know, that's the same thing with Rudolph, trusting him. Right. He's got great hands and digs, same thing. Um, you know, so I think that's all part of the process as we move forward. Uh, what? Like, but, but, again, like I told, I told the team the other night, I said, look, we went to Denver last year. We went right down the field and scored. We went three and out on defense. You know, there's a long way to go here, uh, and we got to continue to get better. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because uh, – you know, we went down and scored. But I, I really liked how the offense looked. Quick count, get, you know, get the ball out, uh, play action, the running game. Those things were all really good to me. And did, anything, did you take anything else out of it? 
that you were looking for? Um, Offensively or defensively, even in terms of well, maybe backups? Well, well we, we need um, – you, you talking about personnel? Yeah. Um, well, we, we got to get better in the secondary in the back, with the backups. Uh, you know, we had way too many – we had 14 penalties, seven of them on defense. And, uh, you know, so that's why we're, I've had a little chat with these guys for three days now about it. And uh, I'll keep harping on it. But so we got to we got to do better there. Um, you know, they had 27 first downs and seven of them were by penalty. So, you know, you can't win games that way. The uh, everybody's kind of figure out, trying to figure out the new, you know, replay of pass interference. You tested it out on a play in which you were hoping you could get offensive pass interference. Um I, I look at this from the outside, completely from the outside, thinking that this decision is a disaster. I, I, I don't think it's going to – because coaches are in the position where they got to decide when to call it, when not to, how, when to save it, when not to, which to me is impossible. Mm-hmm. And it's such a subjective call. Rarely is it as obvious as the Saints-Rams call. So do, what's your position on the change, and how do you feel this is going to play out? Because I don't think anybody's going to end up being happy. Well, I feel there there are possibly some unintended consequences by – trying to officiate that one play in the, in the NFC championship game. Um, I actually on the play one of the, you know, that play, typically the receivers blocking while the ball's in the air. Right. So one of the coaches on the sideline was yelling that. And so I went over and I didn't see the replay. I threw the flag and um, then I looked at the replay. I said, Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't much there. In other no, words. No, but no, you no. got to test it out. And that, yeah. that's the idea of the preseason, right? Yeah, is to yeah. see what you, yeah. what you can if come it was a regular season, I wouldn't have done it, but um, I, Th- there was another play if in the end zone that I was going to challenge if they would have caught it caught the touchdown I would have challenged that well uh, then you still have even though even though they're officiating I don't think they're officiating the, the pass interference part of it it's just whether it's a catch or no catch so there's there's a lot of things going on and I you know I hear a lot of coaches kind of saying the same thing as me. We have to figure out exactly how they're going to call it. And do you have any – I assume you guys have meetings. and I, I, Nobody that I've heard from says even after the explanations they have – they feel any more confident about knowing. I, I really think what they're going to do is, unless it's just blatant, blatant. They'll, they'll not put the flag on the field or pick it up, either one. Mike Zimmer is our guest on the fan. One other thing that's related to, this, to the two beyond this season – you know, eventually, a lot of people have talked about. Oh, you know what? Let me go back to the kicking. I forgot to ask this one question because I think it's strategically <laughs> Thanks, very. I was hoping for that. Very important. Well, no, this is. Is any part of this decision? This is a kicker who a lot of people liked. You know, the word was on the street, man. This guy's got a chance to be really good. That you're not the only. Well, she says you're. You, I know you're. There was you're at least four with teams. Bailey. There was at least yes. four teams after him. And the Bears are one of them, by all accounts. The Bears have had greater misadventures lately than you have with kickers <laughs> over the last couple of years. So is any part of this a strategic move by Spielman to say, yeah, let's take a look at him, and then let's also maybe uh, block a guy who might have helped a competitor within the division? No, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. It was, I mean, if that's a byproduct of it, so be it. But that really wasn't the, the intention. No, it was not. You're telling the truth because I don't know when yeah, you're fibbing or when you're. <laughs> this you know, is this the, is the truth. This yes. is the truth. Yeah. Um, by the way, the other thing about the, uh, the off season in terms of the league, real quick, is there's this new discussion about okay, we hate preseason football. Uh, fans don't like seeing it. It's too expensive, so we either have to expand the playoffs or we have to go to an 18 game schedule. Well, if they if they if the commissioner called you and said, Mike, what do you think of this idea of an 18 game schedule where? players though the maximum number of play or games they could play in would be 16 would you be okay with that would you be say okay there's some strategy we can get into with that or would you lose your mind yeah i'd probably lose my mind you know uh i didn't know this but paul paul allen told me i'm 18 and four in the preseason is that right why That's do i want to get why do i want to get rid of that <laughs> you might want to have more <laughs> <laughs> who knew <laughs> it's an outstanding preseason uh record all right so what's the what's the objective this week um, we need to clean up the penalties, right? Uh, number one thing, defense needs to run the football better than they did the other night. Uh, and I'm hoping that we, we uh, continue to be efficient and run the offense. Like, you know, like la- the other night, we had very few uh, guys running to the other side of the formation, right. things that you normally see in the first preseason game. Uh, had one uh, pre-snap penalty, which was great, but we had holdings, we had pass interferences, you know, all those things. So that that is the number one thing as we move forward. And then, can, like I keep telling them all the time, 
we need to play together as a team. If we'll play together as a team, play con complementary football, offense, defense, and special teams, um, then I think we have a chance to be a good team. Two last things for you. One, is it possible we won't see Dalvin Cook hardly at all in the preseason? What is your no, you're gonna see your him. thinking? You're going to see him. I, I just, you know, they had brand new turf down. It was finished the day before the game. Right. Um, and I made the decision before that, but um, – uh, you'll probably see him in there a little bit this week. I mean, I wouldn't blame you. We are saying this. I, well, why you want to risk regulars in any preseason game? I guess yeah. you have to get well, them out there, right? Well, especially but it's off just offensively, we've got a new system. True. We're trying to work together. Uh, you know, I could probably see the defense not playing because they've been together for a little bit. But offensively, um, yeah, I think I think working together and getting a continuity together and running the right routes and right depths and things like that. I think that would. That helped. Now, the other thing that was really good the other night was protection. His first preseason game, I think, Bob, you told me something like, in how many, how, 10 years that we haven't given up a sack in the first preseason Whoa. game. Whoa. But, and when I looked at the protection, and and we talked about it as coaches about a week ago, you know, we need to start getting better with protection. They've gotten better and better and better as we've gone on. And we've helped them with a lot of the, the play actions, the different protections that we're running, the things like that and I think that's helped help Kirk as well the well, I was going to say and then he had uh, he had a nice scramble on the was a third and nine on the, uh, uh, yeah. the beginning of that drive yeah we've been working so it's the know, new rumbling rumbling cousins down the well, field huh? well we you know we're yeah it, it makes it difficult when the quarterback can scramble and he had a couple in there today that he, he ran so and then he had the nice the roll out right that led to the uh the, to the to the catch the uh, the, the tight end throw yeah. as well right right which you kind of like one defensive question uh, I don't think we talked about this uh, at the beginning of camp Everson Griffin is an interesting name. He's been a huge part of this defense for a while, I don't have to tell you. Last season was cataclysmic across the board for him personally and professionally. Where is he now? Because I keep I hear from people who are close to him say he's in a really good place. How is that going to translate to the field? What is realistic to expect of Everson um, given what you could say, his age, the mileage on him, et cetera? What do you need from him? Well, uh, part, part of what we need is his energy. You know, I think we lost that a little bit when he came in there because he was always kind of the, 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 what the bunny, you know, whatever that, that battery bunny, whatever. That Energizer. Is. Energizer yeah, bunny. Yeah. Um, it kind of, you know, got the team mm -hmm. going and things like that. So I think we missed that a little bit. Um, he's still powerful. He's still got great first step explosion. Uh, you know, we'll, I, I, I feel like we'll have to manage him throughout the course of the season as far as play time so that we can, he can be effective at the end of the year. Uh, which, which fortunately we have some depth in the defensive line. Um, but uh, I feel really good about it. You know, when you talk to him, um, he's the same old Everson he's always been. And, uh, you know, I feel like he's still got a lot of time left. Thanks for the time. Good okay. to see you again. Thanks. Good luck. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate good it as always. You. Good yep. to see you.